you are. Well, welcome. I'm Phil the Storyteller. And I'm Will the Music <clears throat> Teacher. And this is a story. Once upon a time, there was a man. And the man had five sons, five boys. Now, when he got up in the morning, the man would call upstairs, Boys! Boys! You've got to get up now. One of the boys would wake up. Oh, I had a great dream. Another boy would say, Well, I had a better dream than you. And the other one said, Well, I've had a better dream than you. And the other one said, Well, I had a nightmare. And the other said, I don't dream at all. And then they went in to brush their teeth. <laughs> Oh, uh, I can brush my teeth better than anyone in this house. No, you can't. I can. No, you can't. I can. Oh, you can't. I can. I haven't got many teeth. <laughs> they always argued. They argued over everything. And when they came down the stairs, they sat at the table. They got their Cocoa Pops. Whoa, I love Cocoa Pops. I love Cocoa Cup Pops more than you. No, no one loves Cocoa Cups more than me. I love Cocoa Pops. I like cornflakes. <laughs> and they ate and argued and argued and ate. We're constantly fighting and the man was driven bananas. And he said, stop. And all the boys stopped. And they looked up at their dad. They had never seen their dad so angry. And he said, I'm fed up to the back teeth of you guys arguing all the time. You're constantly arguing and being nasty to each other. So I want each one of you to get outside into the woods and find a stick each. And the boys, they got up from the table, they sniffed and they went outside and they started blaming each other. <laughs> I don't argue as much as you. No, you argue more than me. No, I, you argue more than me. And they didn't learn their lesson. And when they got their sticks, they thought to themselves, Oh no, oh no, Dad, he might whack us. He's never whacked us, but he might whack us. It's true, you know. People do get whacked, children. In Cambodia... Well, I've just come back from the Cambodian children said, oh, yeah, you know what? We go to the Cambodian school and what they do, they have we have to put our fingers like that. And then the teacher whacks us on the top of the fingers. Oh, that's bad. And when I was in Uganda telling stories, the Ugandan children said, we like the teacher. He's really good, except when he whacks us. My goodness. Thank goodness no one whacks people in here on our island. But if you go to anyone who has silver hair and ask them, were you ever whacked at school? They might say, yeah, we were whacked at school. But thank goodness that's over. Anyway, the boys were out in the woods and they picked up sticks and they didn't pick up strong sticks. They didn't want to get whacked with strong ones. They picked up thin sticks and they came over to the dad and the dad said, every one of you, give me your stick. And so all the boys gave the dad the sticks and he held the sticks. But then he tied the sticks together. So five sticks were tied together, and then he said to each boy in turn, Right, you, see these sticks? Break them! Well, the boy caught the sticks, and he said, Haha, I'm going to break this sticks. I'm going to break it with my head. <laughs> the sticks didn't break, even though he had a really hard head. The second boy said, I'm going to break the sticks with my teeth. And he got the sticks, put them in his mouth. <coughs> he couldn't break them with his teeth. He gave them to the third boy. And the third boy said, well, I'm going to throw them up in the air and I'm going to head them. So he got the sticks. And he threw them up in the air and they came down and he went. Oh. 
<laughs> he couldn't break the sticks. The fourth boy said, Right, I've got the best idea. I'm going to put the sticks at an angle on a stone. Then I'm going to run up, jump on the sticks. He put them on a stone and he began to his run was good and fast and he jumped and he landed on the sticks and he nearly broke his ankles. The last one said, <laughs> these people don't understand. To break the sticks, you've got to wear them away and I'm going to wear the sticks away on my head. The sticks weren't worn down. So the dad said, right boys, you could not break the sticks. Now watch this. He undid the rope of the sticks. He put all the sticks on the ground. Then he got them one at a time. You see, boys, when the sticks are loose, when they're arguing with each other, when they're not comradely, when they're not brotherly or sisterly, they're weak. But when they're together, they are strong. Because, my dear boys, unity is strength. And that is the end of the story. Unity is strength. Unity is strength, Will. People working together. It's a bit like how we're all working together through the internet these days because of the crisis that's happening. And every day we have a little task for people who are watching at home. And today's task is related to our story that we've just been listening to. Because each of those boys wanted to break the pile of sticks. And did you notice? Each time the sticks were trying to be snapped, there was a different sound. So we had the claves making a snapping sound, and we had the guiro making a scraping, crunching sound, like that. And then we had this instrument which made this amazing sound. And running along and landing with the drum. And finally, you might not have been able to see, I had a guitar, but I wasn't playing it how people usually play the guitar. I was using my pick or my plectrum and I was just scraping the strings. Because do you remember the boy was scraping the sticks on his head? Like that. Now, a bit like yesterday's story, if you tell that story, you would have to make those sounds as well. But you might not have these instruments, but I bet in your home, there are other things that you can use to make some scraping, breaking sounds. If you're in year five at Rill, you might remember we did a project all about Foley. And Foley, if you don't know, Foley means the people in the, mu in the film industry who make sounds for films and for programs. And often when you watch something on television, the sounds that you're hearing are not the real sounds that were filmed, they're added on afterwards. The crunching feet in the snow, sometimes the rain, there's even the sounds of people's clothes rustling. These sounds are often added on afterwards. And in year five, we actually added our own sounds to a film. And to do that really well, we have to really listen closely to make up the best sound to match each part of the story. 
Will, you've got a definition of listening. Mm. What is listening? Well, I like to say listening is hearing plus thinking. So it's a bit like a maths sentence. Hearing plus thinking equals listening. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to us today. And we're going to do more listening kind of exercises a bit later. But for now, it's goodbye from me, Phil the Storyteller. And goodbye from me, Will the Music Teacher. Bye. Bye-bye.